Hello, thank you for joining us. My name is Fred Valles. I'm the founder and CEO of Optimizer. So we sent out the invite uh, for all of you to join us for a webinar today with our partner, Main Street ROI, and their leader, Phil Frost. So uh, Phil has done a number of webinars for us in the past and people have really liked them. So we decided to ask him to do another one. And today he's gonna talk about Google Analytics made simple and how to measure your ROI. So many of you probably have heard Phil on one of our webinars before, but one fact uh, that we haven't told about him that I thought was pretty interesting is that he's a, a big barefoot runner in New York in the Central Park. So I think it takes a lot of determination to run barefoot. Doesn't seem like uh, the most pleasant thing to me, but Phil, maybe you can tell us a little bit about that. And uh, um, you know, if you're that, uh, if you do that sort of stuff in, uh, in running, I'm sure you also drive great results in uh, online marketing takes a lot of persistence. So thanks for joining us today. I'm going to hand the floor to you and let us tell you about Google Analytics. All right. Thanks, Fred. And thanks uh, to the entire Optimizer team for uh, organizing this presentation. So uh, as Fred said, yes, I, I have run completely barefoot. I live in uh, Manhattan, right by Central Park. I've done, I think, a total of 10 miles barefoot in Central Park before my wife uh, said that she would not allow that because <laughs> I was uh, a little bit too risky for her, she thought, um, as well as uh, if you ever run barefoot, it takes a long time to get your feet clean again. Uh, so I, then I started running in Hirachi sandals, and then over the winter, I do actually wear regular shoes, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, It gets a little right, cold otherwise, huh? Yeah, yeah. This, this year it got to uh, one degree, so... I don't think that would be too good to run barefoot in. All right, so back you could to... do it once before your feet fell off. Uh, but yeah, back to Google <laughs> yeah. Analytics. You probably get one time, yeah, one run in. Exactly. All right, so back to Google Analytics made simple. Uh, let's dive into housekeeping. Uh, I always recommend people post questions throughout this. You'll get the... Uh, Fred will be monitoring the questions and uh, he'll, he'll interrupt as needed. Otherwise, we'll do live Q&A at the end. Uh, turn off distractions. You definitely want to uh, turn off your email, and it's uh, uh, tough to pay attention if you're also scrolling through your Facebook feed. And then I like to start off with a poll just to get a feel for who is on. So let me see if I can get this to work. <clears throat> Hopefully I set this up correctly and you'll be able to choose uh, the different marketing channels that you're currently using. Um, if I didn't set it up correctly, then you'll only be able to choose one. And I apologize for that. That did happen one time. Looks like it's working. 100% um, <clears throat> of people are on the line are using Google uh, AdWords, Bing, or Facebook, which I guess would be uh, expected with the optimizer audience. Uh, then we got 83% are doing SEO, about half, 50% email marketing, another half uh, social media. Let me close that out. And just to get a feel for the <clears throat> size of the, the, the businesses and the uh, size of the, the monthly ad budgets, you'll see this next question here. Looks like 90% have uh, pretty substantial marketing budgets over $3,000 per month. And then uh, about 10% in the 500 to 1,000 range. Some folks less than 500. And some folks in the 1,000 to 2,000 range. Let me close that out. The last poll here. Uh, just whether or not you're working with a marketing agency or consultant, or if you are a marketing agency or consultant. And as of right now, 90% down to 80% are agencies or consultants. I guess, again, to be expected with the optimizer audience here. Looks like the, the vast majority agencies, consultants, and then uh, some businesses that uh, are not working with an agency, about 20%, and then 15% said yes. Right, let me close that out. Always good to see who's on the line. All right, so let's get to the agenda. I'll talk briefly about why metrics matter. 
why I recommend you use Google Analytics to track your marketing metrics. We'll walk through how to set up Google Analytics correctly. Uh, in my experience, a lot of businesses will set up Google Analytics, think it's, uh, it's doing the job, but it's not actually set up correctly. So we'll go through all the steps. Then I'll walk through how to report on some of your key metrics. And I already mentioned we'll have live Q&A at the end. So again, my name's Phil Frost, founder of Main Street ROI. Uh, I have over 11 years of experience in digital marketing. Got started in uh, March 2006, which is kind of crazy. It's been 11 years. I actually studied engineering in college, so I'm a bit of a data geek, self-proclaimed data geek. And I bring that up just because, uh, in my experience, most people are not data geeks. A lot of uh, folks are actually scared of uh, a lot of data. I guess that's not the case with this audience, uh, being that a lot of you are managing Google AdWords campaigns. You, you probably are familiar with data, which is good. <clears throat> um, but if you are scared of data and don't like uh, uh, manipulating data and spreadsheets, uh, purpose of this presentation is really to simplify Google Analytics for you uh, so that it's not so daunting. And my thought leadership has been featured in Forbes, Inc., Amex, as well as Mashable. And I've updated this spreadsheet here, or this slide here. It's my favorite slide of the presentation. Now, those are my uh, cute kids. That's Violet on the left. Uh, it's a little fuzzy here. Uh, and then that's my beautiful wife, Erin, in the middle and my chubby son, Emmett, on the right. This was taken on his second birthday uh, earlier this month, and uh, we actually made it back to the same spot that we had his first birthday, which is at a, a beer garden on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. All right, so why do metrics matter? I like to think of Google Analytics like your marketing report card. And uh, believe it or not, I just showed you my four-year-old daughter on the previous slide and my two-year-old son. They go to a daycare uh, every day, and they actually have report cards. It's pretty crazy. Uh, I can't remember how we, often we get them. I think on a quarterly basis. But uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's a great thing for me to see because I can uh, very quickly tell if my kids are on track and uh, hitting some key developmental milestones. For example, when uh, Violet was going through potty training, I could see you know, if she was on track with her peers and if everything was going smoothly. So that was something that I was getting on, I think, a quarterly basis. And you need something similar for your marketing so that you can make sure that your marketing is on track. So if you're doing um, uh, other marketing cha channels beyond uh, just Google AdWords, a lot of folks were saying, they're doing SEO, social media, email marketing. You need to make sure you have a process and have some kind of report card on those channels so that you can ensure they're on the right track. You also want to be able to dig into that data and say and find what I call your superstar marketing channels. So you might dig into your data and find that Google AdWords is working great, uh, maybe the Facebook ads are not performing very well, um, and SEO is mediocre. Uh, you need to be able to, uh, again, call out what is performing well, uh, what's not performing well, and, uh, and see whether it, it makes sense to invest more to bring that up to superstar level, and uh, what's underperforming, and maybe you just need to cut your losses, take that budget, and reallocate it somewhere else. And last but not least, traffic does not equal sales. I think most people online know that, but it's a good reminder that you don't want to be measuring any of your marketing channels purely on traffic alone. That's a common mistake I see businesses making over and over again. They'll, they'll just look at you know, what's bringing in the most traffic, and they think that's, that's what's, quote, working. But the reality is you need to be tracking the, uh, the leads and sales from all of that traffic. All right, so why Google Analytics? First one, it's free. Uh, who doesn't love free? 
Uh, it's pretty pretty straightforward to get set up, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, it works well with others. By that I mean uh, it, it integrates with Google AdWords. Obviously, it's a, a Google product. It integrates uh, and, and tracks automatically uh, social media traffic and, uh, and YouTube traffic. And importantly, it, it's not going anywhere, at least that's my prediction. I, I don't see uh, Google Analytics being uh, shut down in the near future or going out of business. Um, Google is consistently adding new features and investing more and more in that product, which is important because if you're going to invest time setting up an analytics platform and then using that to make business decisions, you don't want that uh, platform to all of a sudden stop uh, being updated or being supported or just completely going out of business. And now you've got to spend all that time migrating that data to another platform. So I, I think that's a, a key factor. All right, now let's walk through the, the six steps to set up Google Analytics correctly. And again, I find a lot of businesses will only, really only complete this first step. And it's the most uh, straightforward step. You just go to google.com forward slash analytics. You create an account. I'm not going to walk through that process. It's really just completing some forms. And then on the final page, you'll get the uh, analytics code or analytics pixel. And that code will look something like this. And you can see it's just JavaScript code. Um, hopefully this isn't anything too scary, but you literally just have to copy this and paste it on every single page of your site. And uh, all this is doing is sending the page view to your Google Analytics account so that it will track that, uh, that uh, visit to that page. So you need this on every single page of your site or else uh, if you're missing it on some pages, you won't be tracking any traffic to those pages that don't have the Google Analytics code. So literally just copy and paste it on all the pages. Uh, if you have a, a CMS like WordPress, you can just put this on one of the template files like the header.php file or the footer.php file. Um, depending on how your site is set up, a lot of times you can really just need to edit one page and it gets applied to the entire site. Okay, so that's step one. You know, most businesses I talk to get past that step. Nothing too crazy. Um, but then a lot of businesses actually don't take it to this next step, which is setting up goals or conversion tracking. And again, traffic does not equal sales. We don't want to just tra tra track the traffic to pages. We want to also see how much of that traffic is turning into leads and sales. So what is a website conversion? It can be an online sale. If you have an e-commerce business, you can track uh, all of the online sales in uh, Google Analytics. If you have a contact form on your site, most businesses do, you can track that as a, um, as a lead into your, uh, in Google Analytics. If you have some kind of free report, uh, some kind of free report uh, form on your site, you can track that. You can even track phone calls. Um, and a lot of phone, tr uh, phone call tracking tools out there will integrate with Google Analytics. The way that works is it, it tricks Google Analytics into thinking it's a uh, it's, it's a page view, so it kind of uh, fakes a page view on your site, and uh, and you set up a goal to track that page view as a phone call. So you can actually see and track phone calls over time in your Google Analytics account. Now the most important goal that you'll want to set up is a destination goal, and here's how to get that set up. You need to go to the admin section of Google Analytics. You can see at the top here, step one, click on admin. And then you want to select goals, which is on the uh, third column on the right. Once you get into the admin section, click on goals. 
and then click uh, create a new goal and you can set up a destination goal where uh, you can see step three here name your goal I called this goal uh, analytics checklist request that's because we have a free Google Analytics checklist and I want to track how many people go to that page and complete the form and the way that a destination goal tracks um, how it tracks that goal or that conversion is it uh, you, you want to track the thank you page of the form you're tracking so when you submit the form you should get redirected to a thank you page and that is the page that you want to track as the destination of that goal so you can see step four here enter the thank you page URL of your web form and uh, you can see I've got the forward slash Google Analytics checklist thank you that is the page after someone completes the form so the only way to get to that page is by completing a form and that's how the, the goal uh, is able to track that now you can optionally create a funnel this is totally optional you can leave that off and it will work fine you can uh, turn that on and then uh, have different steps before the destination in this case it's just uh, the actual offer page which is Google Analytics checklist someone goes there as step one completes the form they will go to the Google Analytics checklist thank you page and that will trigger as a conversion and then step seven you want to verify that goal just click verify it should show you that people have actually made it to that page if they haven't then that can indicate that you haven't set it up correctly uh, and then you just want to click save and you've got that goal set up all right so the the, the key there obviously that was just one goal uh, you then have to repeat that process for every single goal that you want to track or every single form on your site that you want to track so that's absolutely critical so that you have uh, Google Analytics set up to be tracking all of your web forms on your site all right step three is uh, is using what's called the URL builder to track different marketing campaigns now out of the box I mentioned Google Analytics or GA will track a lot of traffic automatically for example traffic coming from Facebook or from Twitter Google Analytics knows that social media traffic it's, it's pretty obvious but sometimes it's not very obvious where that traffic came from so you need to help Google Analytics categorize all of your traffic so the tool you can use is the URL builder and the best way to find it is just go to Google and literally Google uh, URL builder and it should be the first result and it's this crazy URL that's on your screen here this ga-dev-tools that long URL there is where you have to go but again just go to Google that's the easiest way to get to it and then uh, you'll enter in some information about where your uh, where your traffic is coming from for that particular link and I'll get to that in just a minute and then you have to copy and paste that that URL that the URL builder gives you and then you use that in your campaigns to again tell Google Analytics exactly where that traffic came from so the best example is if you're running an email campaign let's say you're do doing an email promotion and I'll use the same example where uh, I'm going to promote the Google Analytics checklist so if it was you you want to be able to tell Google Analytics that you are uh, when people click on that link in your email they came from that email promotion um, and that way Google Analytics will categorize that properly in your reports so the way it works is you enter uh, these different fields the UTM source the UTM medium and optionally you can set it up to have a UTM campaign so the source is the source of the website traffic again let's say you're running an email promotion 
the source there might be um, uh, email newsletter or, or just newsletter. And then the medium is the type of website traffic. In this case, it would be email traffic. So you'd put email in there. And then the campaign, uh, for my example here, might be free Google Analytics checklist. So you'd enter that into the URL builder uh, and automatically that tool will give you the URL that you need to use in your email campaign. You just copy and paste that into the email program that you use. All right, step four is to, this is for SEO. I saw a lot of folks on the line are using SEO. You wanna make sure you link up your Google Search Console account. And that way you can run reports in Google Analytics and see the search queries. So those are the exact keywords uh, people are typing in to Google and finding your website. You'll see the impressions, you'll see how many uh, clicks for each of those keywords, and you'll also see the average position in google.com. To get this to work, you do need a uh, Google Search Console account, and to create that account, you go to google.com forward slash webmaster tools, and then you go to the admin area, the property settings, and then you link those accounts. I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, this is the, the newer version or newer interface where the admin button is actually in the bottom left corner. And then uh, property settings is right in the middle, middle column there. So you click on property settings, scroll all the way to the bottom, and you'll see where that arrow is pointing there, search console, and click adjust search console. And on that next page is where you get to uh, actually add your Search Console account to your Google Analytics account. So you need to link those up, and that way the data in your Google Search Console account will flow into your Google Analytics account. All right, step five is really only relevant for e-commerce businesses. I would say it's critical for e-commerce businesses. It will allow you to show revenue, actual revenue from your e-commerce website in Google Analytics and match that revenue to the sources of the traffic. So at the end of the day, you can run reports and say you made $1,000 from SEO, $5,000 from Google AdWords, and $500 from Facebook. So you can actually match revenue to your different marketing channels. <clears throat> This is a little bit complicated if uh, it really depends on the e-commerce platform that you're using. And I would recommend you first Google, go to google.com and, and type in e-commerce analytics and go to this URL here. It should be the first result there. It's, uh, it's where, it's basically Google's help article to get set up with e-commerce analytics. And there's really just two steps. You have to ena enable it in your admin area of Google Analytics. And then you have to add some code to the thank you page of your shopping cart. And that's where it gets a little bit complicated. It, it is custom based on your shopping cart. And in some cases, your shopping cart might have a checkbox to just turn it on and off, which is awesome. Uh, in other cases, you don't have that capability and you'll have to hire a developer to actually edit the uh, code on your thank you page. So that can get a, a little bit complicated. It does require uh, some uh, JavaScript expertise to get that all working properly. But again, the, the end result here is that all of the sales on your site all that sales data will get sent into Google Analytics. And I'll show you some reports later on where you can see dollars and you know, actual revenue uh, per marketing channel, um, even uh, per website, if it's a referring website, you can really uh, see exactly how much money you're making for your digital marketing. And the sixth step here is 
only relevant if you're using Google AdWords, but I, I, I think most people are who are on the line today. And this allows you to view user behavior data for your Google AdWords traffic. And uh, if you're using Google AdWords, I'm sure you have AdWords conversion tracking set up. So you might be thinking, oh, I don't really need Google Analytics. But if you link up these accounts, that allows you to see what's happening after someone clicks on an ad and starts surfing around on your website. So Google Ad AdWords is great. Uh, the conversion tracking is great and, and certainly critical, but it tells you nothing about what happened after they clicked on the ad, um, if they didn't convert, and if they did anything in between clicking on an ad and converting. And you can get that data in Google Analytics. If you haven't already, you'd have to obviously create an account. That would be step one. <clears throat> and then you just go to admin, the property uh, middle column, and then AdWords linking. So this is that screen here where you've got the admin button on the bottom left, and then AdWords linking in the middle middle column there. Just click AdWords linking, and then uh, you have to um, I'll just, I, I believe it's a big red button you click on and you can link up your, you just select which account you want to link and then link that into your Google Analytics account. And at that point, if you complete those six steps, you have finally set up your Google Analytics account correctly and you are ready to run reports. So before we get into the actual reports I recommend, you want to take a step back and think about which metrics are actually important. And this brings up the concept of aggregate data versus channel specific metrics. Again, this is a, a misconception I see over and over again uh, with <clears throat> uh, people looking at aggregate data uh, versus digging a little bit deeper and looking at the data specific to the source of traffic or the, the actual marketing channel. So I, I definitely recommend avoiding looking at just, you know, aggregate data or, um, you know, website uh, as a whole type data. Uh, unfortunately, when you log into Google Analytics, the first page you'll typically see is, you know, all of your traffic to, for the website, you'll see, um, your your average time on site uh, for all of the different sources of traffic, the average bounce rate for all the different sources of traffic. And uh, I see this over and over again. People will look at that data and make decisions about their marketing, but really that, that data is not telling you anything because you don't know if there's a specific marketing channel that's skewing that data up or down. So examples of aggregate metrics, just looking at all the monthly website traffic to your site, <clears throat> looking at the average website bounce rates across the whole site, average time on site across the whole site, versus channel specific metrics. Examples would include looking at just organic search traffic and, and looking at the trends over time. Uh, just looking at your paid search traffic and looking at uh, conversion rates, um, you know, breaking out search versus display. Uh, obviously, you could then uh, from there dig even deeper into certain ad groups and different targeting. Looking at uh, re just zeroing in on referral traffic and looking at your referral traffic bounce rates. And then actually digging into that and seeing if there are specific sites that might be skewing that metric. And then looking at the conversions per marketing channel. So those aren't those are not the most important and they're in no specific order. Those are really just examples to show you uh, channel specific metrics versus those aggregate metrics. And here's an example problem. And I, I see this a lot. Um, businesses will 
see that their bounce rate increased or decreased and they're wondering you know what happened <clears throat> and if you're just looking at your overall bounce rate it's really impossible to see what the heck's going on so the the first step I would recommend is to actually dig into the channel metrics here so if you did see that your overall bounce rate uh, went up considerably you'd want to look at individual channel metrics and see did it increase across all the channels or was there one specific channel that had a, a, a dramatic increase or decrease and then once you dig in to the channel did it uh, you, you could also splice that by device and that's uh, obviously more and more important as more of your uh, traffic is coming from mobile and tablet you'll start to see that your website is behaving differently uh, per device and ultimately the answers here are going to be found by digging into specific channel reports again versus just trying to look at your aggregate data so three steps that I recommend and you, you'd really want to do this depending on how much traffic you're getting at least on a monthly basis uh, if you have a very high traffic site and you're generating a lot of uh, leads and sales each week you could consider doing this on a weekly basis but uh, you want to be analyzing it uh, first looking at uh, high-level overview looking at top marketing channels by traffic uh, top marketing channels by uh, behavior top marketing channels by conversions or goals and then review your trends so trends over time in each marketing channel to spot any potential issues if you see that a particular uh, channel let's say traffic is trending up conversions are trending down that would obviously indicate a problem and then review uh, top landing page performance okay the first step here is using the channels report it's by far my favorite report in Google Analytics it's an overview of all your marketing channels you'll get to this report by going to acquisition all traffic channels and the advanced tactic here which I already mentioned is to use the URL builder and that will improve your accuracy that way uh, you'll ensure that all of your traffic is getting categorized properly into the most appropriate channel so here's how to navigate to the channels report on the left hand column again you go to acquisition all traffic channels and you'll see a a, uh, a graph at the top and then below that graph you'll see this table where it actually breaks out individual channels so you can see the top one here paid search uh, this other is actually other advertising that is uh, that needs to be corrected and be categorized correctly uh, referral traffic that's other websites linking to you email traffic is uh, obviously from email organic search is your SEO traffic direct is an important one because that uh, a lot of times if you have a lot of traffic that's getting categorized as direct it's indicating a problem with your tracking where you you definitely need to use the URL builder to make sure you're categorizing that traffic correctly so if uh, your number one channel is direct and you use let's say a lot of email marketing uh, a, a possibility here is that your email traffic is getting categorized as direct because you're not using the URL builder to help Google Analytics so this is depending on how many different channels you're using you'll see a row for each channel <clears throat> and you can see the the traffic stats here so sessions uh, being a, uh, a user session or a visit for uh, that particular channel then you have your behavioral metrics so your bounce rates pages per session and average session duration or average time uh, per average time on site per channel and you can see 
the difference here in bounce rates. So on the high end, um, with uh, let's say other advertising here, number seven is 88% bounce rate. So that's a very high bounce rate. <clears throat> on the low end, 27% uh, for referral traffic. And just again, looking at the aggregate data, at the top it says 46%. So depending on, on your site, you might look at that and say, oh, 46%. Totally fine, things are great. But if you dig into this channels report, you can actually see that you, you have some potential problems here with advertising with a, a very high bounce rate um, on uh, the other advertising as well as display ads. Uh, and you have a relatively low bounce rate on referral traffic. Likewise with pages per session and average session duration, that uh, varies pretty substantially across channels, and the uh, the aggregate aggregate data really is misleading. And then uh, the last column here, or last section, is your conversions section, and I've got it set to e-commerce. So this is a e-commerce business where they have e-commerce analytics set up, and you can see we've got the revenue per marketing channel for this date range. <clears throat> you can also see the uh, conversion rate varies pretty drastically. We've got uh, on the low end, again, that other advertising, 0.02% versus on the high end with email marketing, 1.27%. So uh, this this is a, a much better report to, for you to actually judge the performance of your different marketing channels. All right, the next step here would be to use the channels graphs. This is going to show you the trends over time. And it's the same report, but you just take it a step further and you actually click on one of the channels. And a more advanced tactic would be to use a couple metrics versus the default metric, which is uh, sessions. So in this example here, I just clicked on paid search. At the top, you can see it's saying default group channel or channel grouping paid search. <clears throat> and then I added e-commerce conversion rate so that I can see sessions or visits in dark blue. You can see that trend. And then I can see e-commerce conversion rates in the light blue, and I can see that trend. And the question here is what's wrong with this picture? You can see traffic from paid search starting to increase in January. This was uh, January 2015, and we see a, a dip in conversion rates. So we actually increase traffic, but conversion rates start going down. So that is a, a potential problem that you would not likely notice unless you started to, uh, on a consistent basis, uh, review the trends for each of your, your channels. So you do want to be looking at not just the uh, raw data for a, for a date range, also make sure you're looking at the trends over uh, a particular time frame. And this is another graph here just showing uh, display. So these are display ad campaigns, uh, display ad campaign traffic. Um, you've got visits in dark blue and then bounce rate. You can see that uh, steadily increasing over time, which also uh, clearly indicates a problem um, somewhere between July and October there. Uh, likely something was changed on the site or maybe the targeting for those ad campaigns was changed and we've now got a, uh, a much higher bounce rate. People are not, basically are not finding what they're looking for. All right, next report here is the top landing pages by channel report. And this can help you find basically basically your, your superstar landing pages. So you're focusing your time and attention on the most important pages on your site. And you can get this by going to the behavior section of Google Analytics and then site content landing pages. And the advanced tactic here 
is to add what are called segments. I'll show you that in just a minute. So here on the left side, you can see behavior, and then you have to click into site content, and then within that section, it's landing pages. And then uh, at the top, you can see that plus add segment, and by default, it's saying all sessions, so all visitors are being uh, tracked in this report. But we can actually segment that by clicking on add segment. And in this example, I'm just selecting organic traffic uh, and paid traffic. So I'm going to look at landing pages segmented by organic traffic and paid traffic. And you'll see a table like this in your report. <clears throat> and you'll see uh, I blurred out each landing page. And uh, you can see number one, that's blurred out. And then underneath each landing page is a row for each segment. So again, I'm segmenting organic traffic and paid traffic. <clears throat> and now you can see the, uh, the data for each landing page per marketing channel. And again, you've got the uh, the traffic data in the first three columns. Then you have your behavioral data, and then you have your e-commerce or goals conversion data. So here's a, a recap or a checklist of what we covered. Uh, we talked about adding the Google Analytics code to every single page on the site. It won't work if it's not on the page. And we talked about setting up goals. And the most important goal is what's called the destination goal. And you'll use the thank you page of all of your forms as the, uh, the goal destination, the destination, uh, uh, destination goal URL. <clears throat> then we talked about using URL builder. And again, the importance of that is that uh, Google Analytics will track your traffic. And it does a pretty good job. But if you don't use the URL builder, Google Analytics can get confused and might not know exactly where the traffic came from. A uh, classic example is with email marketing. And if any of the people on your list are using the program Outlook, then if uh, those people click on a link using Outlook, it will open up a, a new browser window and go to that page. And to Google Analytics, that looks like direct traffic. It just basically came out of nowhere, opened up a, a brand new browser window, window, went straight to that page on your site. It looks like someone just went straight to it. It looks like direct traffic. But if you use the URL builder to properly um, categorize that traffic as email, then if someone clicks on that link in Outlook, opens up a brand new window, Analytics will know, hey, this is not direct traffic. This is actually email traffic, and it, it came from the email newsletter, and it's uh, from this particular campaign. Then we talked about linking Google Search Console. That way your SEO data, like uh, search queries, uh, average position in Google, impressions and clicks, that will all flow into Google Analytics. If you have an e-commerce business, Highly recommend setting up e-commerce analytics. And then we talked about reviewing your channels reports, your trends in each of the marketing channels, the trends graph, and the top landing page performance per marketing channel. I do have a, a special offer for all of the attendees today. It's a, uh, a bundle of three of our step-by-step -step training courses. First one is a complete SEO tune-up. <clears throat> Second one is how to set up a profitable Google AdWords campaign. Third one is step-by-step -step Google Analytics setup and reporting, which goes into uh, everything we covered today in much more detail, uh, as well as more advanced reporting. And uh, we sell each of those courses on our site for $97. So that's a total value of $291. Since you attended today, you'll actually get that for just $97. And you can get that by going to MainStreetROI.com forward slash 
marketing bundle. And with that, we'll open it up to q and I think I got the timing perfectly. It's about 12.45. All right, Phil, thanks for that presentation. Um, so one question that I saw coming in was about uh, connecting the Search Console. And so they're asking, um, now that the queries are encrypted by Google, is that actually a way to still get at that data? Or what are the limitations as far as what you can get from SEO data? That's a great question. So you used to be able to get the keyword data within the channels report of organic search. And then uh, like that, that uh, person said, Google started encrypting that data. And if you go in and try to look at the keyword data, it'll all basically say um, not provided. Um, and the workaround is to use Search Console and use that data. That will not be encrypted. That's the real uh, query data. Um, the, the problem with it, the limitation is it does not connect the dots as far as uh, which page on your site is ranking for which keyword. And you used to be able to do that in the organic search uh, channels report. You used to be able to dig into that and see all the keywords and actually see the landing pages. Now that is basically decoupled. Um, and all you can see is the keywords. So you can see all the queries where you're ranking and uh, your average rank, impressions, clicks. And then there's a separate report for the landing pages, uh, and it shows those pages that are ranking. Uh, but it doesn't take, it, it's not that hard to figure it out. Uh, it's just a little bit annoying that Google isn't connecting those for you into one nice report. Right. That's a good answer. Uh, not much more we can do on that one, unfortunately, then, of course, if Google is not connecting the dots. Um, the other question was to do with, uh, so you explained the UTM builder and how that connects um, to different sources together through Google Analytics. But what about cost data from like Facebook and Bing ads? Uh, that doesn't flow automatically. So what is your suggestion for that? That's a good question. I I have not uh, been, I haven't tried to link up that data. Have you, Fred? Do you have a solution for that? Yeah, and so it's it's a fairly manual process. You can actually import it. Um, and then there are some tools out there that will automate the process. So they will download the reports through the Facebook API and the Bing Ads API, and then they will automatically connect it into the right format for Google Analytics. Uh, but they're all paid solutions. As far as something that's like free and super easy to use, unfortunately, I haven't seen that. So it is a bit of a the downside of using a Google tool is that they, they work really well with the Google ecosystem, but when it comes to the others, um, it, it's just not automated. Yeah. And the other solution that that I use would be basically using both the ad platform data and Google Analytics. Um, so you get the cost data, obviously, in, in, let's say, Facebook ads or Bing ads. Uh, and then and then tying that uh matching that manually to the data and analytics right and i think the question comes a little bit from the agencies on the call here they probably want to do something as far as reporting and so um in a, in a tool like optimizer you can use google analytics to include the reporting data from say facebook and actually we have a native integration with facebook and bing ads but if you had something like ad roll where you were still doing yahoo gemini like how do you get that data into the system? Um, and you could achieve it through Google Analytics, but to get like a 100% complete picture, not just like how many clicks are being driven from these channels and how many sales, but also how much am I spending for that? That's where you kind of have to do the, the cost import as well. So I think that, that was sort of the underlying nature of that question. Any other questions that you see on your end, Phil? Let's see. <clears throat> Uh, I did. I do see. Do you have a slide of the actual page for the URL builder? I can uh, pull that up really quickly. Let's see here. Let me 
me just drag this over. So hopefully you can see this now on my screen. This is the campaign URL builder. So again, it's got that funky uh, URL there. Just go to Google and type in URL builder. And then you just fill in the data here. So this is uh, our Google Analytics checklist. Uh, let's say it's um, from a Facebook campaign with cost per click, CPC, and then uh, campaign name, small business owner, uh, NYC, if that was, let's say, the, the targeting there. Uh, and you can fill out even more data. You can, uh, let's say you were split testing ads. Uh, you can use uh, this field here. Really, this is all up to you as far as what data you want to put in there. I do recommend you do all lowercase and try to keep things simple uh, because it is case sensitive. And if you do campaign medium CPC for one link and then CPC for another link, that can get uh, become two separate rows in your Google Analytics um, uh, reports, which can kind of make things funky. So that's really all you need to do. Type in the data as far as where that traffic's coming from. And then scrolling down here, this is what the URL looks like. And you can see it's pretty straightforward. It's just UTM source equals whatever you put in there, UTM medium equals, UTM campaign equals, and then spaces become percent 20. So you can actually uh, do this yourself in an Excel spreadsheet if you wanted to. And that's often the faster way than, right, once you understand the format, do a download from all of the Facebook uh, ads and all the Bing ads, get it all in a single spreadsheet, do a quick find and replace, and then just post it back in through, like, the, uh, the Bing ads editor. It's going to be much more efficient. Exactly. Yeah, you can even use formulas in, uh, uh, in your Excel sheet to actually grab, let's say, the, the ad group of... Um, you know, of your uh, your Bing Ads campaign and throw that as like the the term or the content. All right, let's see. Uh, so I think we have time for one more question there, and then we're gonna have to uh, wrap it up. Both Phil and I have a, another webinar to do right after this. So. <clears throat> So Ryan had a good question. How do I see where the bounce rate drops in the sales funnel? So if you have a defined sales funnel, let's say uh, it's e-commerce and you, you, somebody clicks add to cart, they go to a specific page, and then there's a couple pages that they have to complete to complete that order, you can set that up as a goal funnel. And if you remember... Uh, in my example, previously, I just had one step as the the funnel. You can have multiple steps, and you could have, um, you know, page one of checkout, page two of checkout, page three of checkout. Once you set up a goal funnel, Google Analytics will then report on the traffic flowing through that funnel, and that's found in the conversions section of Google Analytics there's actually a, a visual of the funnel and you could see a thousand people getting to step one and then 800 people getting to step two and then 200 people getting to step three and you'll actually get those, uh, they're not they're not bounce rates, they're drop off rates per uh, page or per step in your funnel. Yeah, exactly. And that's a really good report to look at. And, and ultimately, I think most people are going to find that the fewer steps you can have in your conversion funnel, that's certainly going to be your biggest help in terms of getting more people through the whole thing. You know, obviously, if you have to ask for a lot of information, sometimes it makes sense to break it into multiple steps. Um, but I was just kind of following the PPC chat on Twitter this morning as well. And, and people were complaining about, you know, when they make you give your phone number um, to sign up for a webinar. And I actually don't know if we made you do that. So it made me think, like, <laughs> hey, did we make that mistake? But people are like, why do you need my phone number if all I want to do is attend a webinar, right? So really think about which fields are really critical for you to, um, to 
to, to, to provide what you want to provide and still have some value from it for yourself, of course. Um, and reduce, 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 because drop-off really does happen the more questions you ask. Um, right, I also had a, another really interesting example from PPC chat, but it was somebody complaining about GNC, uh, the vitamin company. So they had a field on there which uh, was asking people whether they were male or female, and um, some people from the LB, LGBT community um, took uh, significant offense to the fact that it was very limited and people couldn't identify as uh, other, right, besides the two choices on there. And so I think it's, uh, as society is changing, you, you kind of sort of these things you may not always think about, um, but even a little field like that on the form can significantly piss people off and actually be the reason for people to drop off and say, hey, listen, if they're not going to think about that, I don't want to do business with that company. So, Yeah. That's a great point. All right, well, I think we got through most of the questions. Um, if anyone has follow-up questions for me, feel free to to contact us at uh, info at MainStreetROI.com. It's on, let me get rid of the screen. It's on this screen here. And then Fred, uh, if anyone has questions for you. you yeah, I'm just Frederick up? at Optimizer.com. Um, you can just go on to optimizer.com, open up the help box, and just uh, tell my team you're looking for me, and they'll make sure it gets to me. Um, but it's frederick at optimizer.com or at Silicon Valleys on Twitter. So, yeah, uh, thank you, Phil, for doing this. Great education, as always, on how to use Google Analytics. So uh, thank you all for attending. Um, we'll be doing more webinars. Uh, I, myself, have one coming up in five minutes. It's a new user webinar about Optimizer, so if anyone hasn't used it much, please join me for that one. And then uh, for the rest of the quarter, we're also looking at a couple of additional webinars on very specific Optimizer features. Um, Phil, do you have any other webinars coming up that people could join? Yes, we, will, we are doing uh, pretty much weekly webinars, so um, we will definitely follow up with, uh, with future webinars coming up here on, on various uh, marketing tactics, related to SEO, advertising, and email marketing. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone for attending. We'll wrap it up here and uh, everybody have a great Tuesday. Bye now.